Hey guys, it's Catherine Morgan here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now this channel is here to bring you short but powerful videos to help you to navigate both the emotional side of money, our relationship with money and the practical steps to help you to reduce financial anxiety and become more financially empowered to deserve wealth, grow wealth and create wealth. My name's Catherine and I'm a qualified financial planner and international multi-award winning financial coach. That's a bit of a mouthful. So welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button and do leave me a comment below and let me know what was your biggest takeaway from listening to this video. Speak to you soon. Hey guys, so on today's YouTube video, we're going to be talking about budgeting. Yes, I know this is the one area that you've been putting off and putting off and putting off. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about three, get my fingers right, three of the best budgeting tips that you need to know about today. Now, I know that one of the biggest challenges around budgeting is the fear that it's complicated. It's going to take me too long. It's going to restrict how much I can spend. And we're going to bust through some of those myths today and introduce you to three of the best budgeting tips um, in today's video. I hope you enjoy. So a huge welcome to the In Her Financial Shoes podcast. And today we're going to be talking about top tips for budgeting that everybody should know. Now, I know this, that the word budgeting can be a little bit scary for some people um, because it's that kind of fear of not being in control or, or the fear of having to um, not be able to spend money on certain things because you're having to kind of restrict your spending. So I'm really interested, actually, to dive into this topic today around budgeting. Now, we have an incredible guest on the show today. Uh, I'm going to try and pronounce the Italian version. I didn't study Italian at school. Um, I did German and French. So my Italian is pretty poor, but I'm going to give us a, a, a stab. And uh, we've got the CEO and co-founder of Emma, which is a, a money app which helps people save money and optimise their spending. Um, and the co-founder we have on today is um, Eduardo Morini. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yeah, I think that was right, correct. It was like one of the closest ones ever. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you're fluent in German as well. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, thanks for having me. Uh, yes, as you said, I'm the co-founder of Emma. Uh, we are building like a money savings app that helps people uh, track their spending and optimize the way that they purchase. And I guess we've been doing this for the last three years. So we have got a lot of insights into how to structure like uh, a proper budget. Yeah, great, great. And, and we, so we came across the Emma app about 18 months ago, I think it was. And at the time I was doing a lot of research around different kind of money aggregator apps. And money yeah. aggregator apps are apps that you can kind of plug in to your bank account where they have like a read-only access, where they can read your data and give you good insights. And at the time we were kind of looking at um, a few different types of apps. And we came across Emma. And what I really loved about Emma was it, it looked very feminine, obviously, with the name Emma. I'm, I'm be curious to know what made you come up with the name Emma. We'll, we'll go into that in a second. Um, but yeah, about 18 months ago. And what I love about the app is it does give you an incredible amount of insights into your spending habits, which is something we talk about all the time on the podcast. <laughs> so tell us, um, Ed Eduardo, tell us a little bit about yourself and the journey to build the app. I, I actually like I started the company like uh, three years ago in 2018 with my co-founder who actually met in uni in Manchester uh, we were actually uh, both studying computer science and at the time we were actually working on like uh, a few different like projects and um, I think it was like second or third year of uni that we want to start like a new project together and I was like, maybe it's time that we call this Emma because like my initials are EM and your initials are MA. And he was like, no, no, this is like a terrible idea. And so basically we, we never used that name for that specific project, but years later down the line, when we were thinking about, you know, going into the budgeting space, it was like, this is the right time to call it Emma. And uh, the reason why, you know, it's called Emma, the reason why the logo is a gummy bear and it's super friendly is because as you said, 
looking at budgets and looking at your money for some people is extremely challenging and sometimes it's even scary. And what we really want to do is actually close that gap by making extremely friendly, but also like dumb in a way that, you know, you don't feel the pressure of like uh, looking at your balance or you looking at your budgeting and, you know, see where like your money is going. And it, it needs to be like, for us, like budgeting needs to be like a game. You need to think of a game and payday should be an exciting day where you plan the next 30 days or like four weeks ahead uh, for the next one. And, and that's what, you know, like what Emma is all about. It's about gamifying money um, by connecting to all your bank accounts. I love that. So I'm really curious then to know, so you, you came over to the UK and you studied in Manchester when you met your co-founder, who was also Italian. Yeah. Um, what was that? What So from that moment of studying computer, was it computer science and tech? Yes, uh, I came here. I actually applied to Union of Manchester for theoretical physics. And then three months before I was like, no, I'm just going to go to computer science. So I, I switched course. And uh, in the first week, I realized that in a class of 200 people, there were there was like another Italian. And, uh, you know, I spent like 10 days trying to avoid him because uh, I was like, you know, I'm Italian. I came to the UK. I just want to speak English. And then it was game over after like 10 days. And we actually realized that we had a lot in common. And, you know, during those four years, uh, there were a, a few points uh, in that period where we saw there was a huge gap in the way, the, in, in the expectations that people have got from their own banks and what the, the banks actually do, right? Because at the end of the day, a bank is just like a place where you put your own money, but it doesn't really like look after your finances or the way that you interact with them. So in that period, for example, like I, um, I had two accounts and I was like transferring money around and for a week, I was completely um, in overdraft on one account without even realizing and the bank didn't even like tell me or notify me. And that was the first like, aha, in the sense like, this seems something that someone should do, like tell me, look, you're going to go in overdraft or look, there is a recurring payment you're paying. Do you know about this? Because in first year, I remember this was like 2012, I signed up to the Netflix free trial. And then by the end of the year, I realized I paid for the whole year and I wasn't even watching Netflix at the time. So it's all about who should be the tool software or even the bank that tells me these things. And we don't think that this is the job of the bank. The job of the bank is just to take care of the money in a really like, uh, you know, trustworthy way in a safe place. But then the experience on top of like the way we interact with money should be handled by someone else. And that's what Emma is about. Emma is about focusing on your money and giving you the tools to actually be able to have full control over your life finances. Yeah, it's, it, and, and the example you just shared there about like the Netflix subscription that you kind of forgot yeah. about, like, that's one of the things I love in the app is that, you know, you can look at your subscriptions really clearly, you can see what's coming up for renewal, you know, you can cancel, you know, the ones that you know you're not using, and, you know, even for somebody like, you know, for somebody like me who talks about money every single day, this yeah. stuff happens to me too. Like people always think, oh, you must have all your stuff, or like all your ducks in a row. And I'm like, no, like sometimes I forget about the subscriptions I've signed up for. I forget when my car is due for its service or, you know, so we're all human. And I think that what I love about the aggregation apps is the ability to be able to humanize the money side to actually help you to manage money better um so I, I really I really like um anything that's that assists in that kind of process of uh helping the human side of money and helping us to feel better about money yes um so so you so you were quite keen and early on then to create something that filled that gap that you were then identifying for yourself in the personal finance space yes because like i mean if you look at history like i think that people for the last 25 years have been using like uh, excel sheets but again that's not real time it's not 24 7 always on it requires you to open your bank account multiple times a week or a day to you know transfer all those expenses it's definitely like really inefficient and it's not like you know this sort this sort of like intelligence that lives next to you and operates 24 7 so Excel sheets, they don't take control. They don't make you stop worrying. They're just like uh, extra work that you shouldn't be able to, you know, you shouldn't do. Um, and the other like alternative to that were like a few tools that were definitely not user-friendly or had any, you know, capability to go in the hands of uh, everyone. 
uh, because it was just like people that were trying to still replicate Excel sheets via mobile app or, or like a website. And so that's what Emma is all about, is about, you know, building this sort of like super easy and friendly tool uh, that people trust to just like manage their money. Um, but again, you know, when it comes down to subscriptions, it's incredible that to this date, after like all these years, it is still one of the biggest hook when people download the app because they download the app, connect their accounts and realize right away that they're paying for something that they, they weren't aware of. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite like crazy, right? We live in a subscription world now though, don't we? I mean, pretty much every business model, um, you know, have membership subscriptions in some capacity. And, yeah. you know, and one of the human biases you know often is that we you know we sign up for these things because maybe it's FOMO fear of missing out or everybody else yeah. is doing it so I'll join and we kind of follow the crowd it's that sort of herd mentality or we maybe get you know a huge confidence um you know it shakes our confidence we think oh I'll just go and learn about this and I'll sign up to this and then we kind of forget about it mm -hmm. um, or you know something can happen where we think well I need help with this um, and we'll just sign up to all of these things and never actually take advantage of using them. So, yeah, it's definitely something we see, you know, from a behavioural perspective all of the time. Um, so I'm curious as well then, um, Edwarda, how was, how was that journey through creating an app? How has that helped you with your relationship with money? I became obsessed <laughs> in the sense that, you know, like you go from uh, looking at your bank account once a month to checking it to two, three, even four times a day. Uh, and, you know, there, there isn't that much information that happens <laughs> in the same day to check it multiple times. But, you know, it puts you in a, in a mindset of like, I really want to improve and uh, I want to see my balances going up. And um, mm -hmm. I want to actually structure myself in a way where uh, the balances will always go up and, you know, I will have like some savings, some investments later in life or even like, like a pension. So it really gives you like uh, a perspective around money, right? And, and that's like the biggest investment that you can do uh, for yourself, wherever you're at, you know, regardless you are 20, 30, 40, 50, it's like, you know, put yourself in that mindset and just improve. And how has that greater awareness helped you to manage money? I think that for me, like payday became probably the most exciting day of the month. Uh, but it's, it's, not, it's not even like how much like you make that makes it exciting. It's more about the ideas that you might have about you know, using that payday and saying, okay, uh, I take these 200 pounds and I put them in a savings account and then I keep the others on the current account. And then these other like a shuffle around and I put it maybe 50 pounds on like a robot advisor or like a ISA stock and share. I mean, there are plenty of that, like how they're in the market, both offered by banks or non-banks. And so I think, I think that I found that day extremely exciting in terms of that. And um, yeah, it gives me the, the vibes. And then it, it, it becomes slightly depressing because after payday, you need to wait for another month to get <laughs> your next salary. But, you know, it's all about planning that and making sure that uh, everything is all aligned with your plans for, for the month. Yeah, I, lo I love that. Like that greater awareness just gives you more confidence to be able to, you know, look at your plan and think, OK, so where am I going to allocate this money to? And th that feeds very much into one of the golden rules that we talk about on this podcast, which is giving every pound a purpose. Yes, and, yes. And having that excitement of, OK, payday's arrived. And, and, you know, I know it's different if you're running a business because you may get money kind of coming in in dribs and drabs. So maybe every yeah. day feels like payday. But it's that, you know, that feeling of, I feel good about this because I'm yep. more in control because I have the more awareness about it. I actually don't like the word in control very much. I think when I say it, it it's more about having awareness to feel better, to make better decisions, to be more informed, yep. and be more proactive than reactive. Control yep. for me is a little bit like um, quite negative because it feels like someone has to be in control of somebody or of something but this yeah. is about you being in control of money because money is just a thing money you know is just a tool for me it's more about giving you the confidence to have greater awareness of what decisions you want to make around money yes okay. and, and how does that relate then to if we one of the things we uh, love to share on this podcast um eduardo is about people's relationships with money so growing up in italy how 
how did that influence your relationship with money and how is that different maybe to how your relationship with money is today i think that you know like italy and uh, the uk they are completely different when it comes down to money in the sense that uh, italy is still like a cash-based society so there is like 50 percent still very like cash uh while in the uk you know since the day I've come here, like nine years ago, I've never like used cash. Uh, and to this date, I really like, I think that the last like cash withdrawal I made was like three, four years ago. And, uh, you know, when some merchants here ask for cash, I refuse and leave. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that there, there has been like that sort of like shift in that. But also like, I think that in here, people are way more like open to talk about money or at least to talk about the tools that they use uh, to manage their money. Uh, it is still like taboo uh, in probably in the same way that, you know, sex was taboo 40 years ago uh, on TV, radio and, you know, a bit everywhere. Uh, but, you know, we are like facing like a huge like uh, paradigm shift. Like um, I don't see money as being taboo in the next 20, 30 years. I see uh, becoming, you know, talking about money, but even like talking about each one compensation for money we have as like a normal, like friendly uh, topic. Um, and that's something that maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit autistic myself, but like, I don't have any issue in sharing those details and like talking about it openly and saying, you know, what I do and what I don't do with like uh, my money. Um, for example, like one of the crazy stories that um, I have about it is that when we actually started the company, um, we basically got an, an initial investment, which was like half a million pounds, which was like quite a lot. But me and my co-founder, we made the decisions to basically uh, sell, basically pay us like a minimum salary of like 25k and we were living like in central London and um, so it's, it's already quite impossible to live with that salary in London um, and you know even at that time I was saving 500 pounds a month uh, why because I was like super focused on uh, building the company and I put my myself in a perspective where I was like entertainment is not included and that's how I was be able to create the savings and you know this is like another story of like, it doesn't really matter like how much you're making and where you're at. You can still like save budget and put something on the side regardless if you're able to actually, you know, plan it correctly and avoid uh, buying or purchasing things that you really don't need or you might need like in six, 12 months uh, or even like, you know, two years. <laughs> That's a, a, and what a great way to go into this next kind of, let's, you know, three, three big budgeting tips. Cause I think what you just shared there about it doesn't matter how much you're earning, everyone yeah. can be saving a percentage of their income. Yeah. But like you say, sometimes it might be that we have to prioritize certain things so that, you know, in the example you just shared there, what I heard you talk about was that, you know, you have half a million funding, but you're paying yourself 45,000, which in the center of London is not, um, not a, you know, that will probably just barely pay your rent in some places. Yeah. <laughs> at the time, to be honest, I was like, I want to be a 21K or a, like 18K. And my co-founder was like, you know, that we're not going to be able to pay rent at <laughs> 21K. I was like, okay, let's do 25. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and did were, were you always, like from your family backgrounds, we, were that savings habit, was that instilled in you at? I think that, you know, I think my granddad uh, was like a great like uh, saver and has always been in the sense that, you know, whenever they had some extra money, they would put it aside. And um, it's incredible because like to this date, I think he's got like some savings account. They're like with fixed interest. And, you know, 30 years ago, the interest were at 15%. Yeah. They weren't like a zero like, like now. So it's quite, it's quite incredible to see someone that, you know, 30, 40 years ago, we actually made the decision to put money on the side in a savings account. Um, but no, from like my family side, I think that I didn't really get many inputs about money, but when I was like 16, 17, I got introduced to the idea of like receiving some money every week. So like, you know, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, just to you know, buy lunch or buy like uh, recharge my, top up my phone, like all these like, you know, basic, like, um, I would say simple tasks. And then by 19, I was already a uni already, like, you know, taking control of like everything. But I think that for me, the real big change was that by my third year of uni, I started working as a, like a self-employed. And so I was building websites, mobile apps. And that's when like I completely became fully independent and I stopped receiving money from my family. And that was like a complete shift in the way I was like dealing with my money. And it was also like the time where 
I, I really wanted like a tool like Emma to track what was happening because I was seeing that, you know, I was making some progress and I just wanted to visualize the progress or like have, have like a tool to plan the next 12, you know, 24 or 36 months I had. But I think that, you know, when it comes down to budgeting, like the biggest advice I have is that, you know, as soon as you receive the money, plan ahead. Like mm. right now in my uh, current account, there are probably 50 pounds. Uh, but the reason being that is the, that's the reason, the, the way I plan um, my money is this, uh, in the sense that I get paid uh, on Friday, which is the last working day of the month. And I take out all the things that I already know that I'm not going to use. And then I just keep the essentials, you know, for rent, groceries, um, any form of entertainment. And that amount, you know, is always, is always fixed unless, you know, your rent increases or, you know, you start buying more food because maybe there is a new family member. I don't know. That amount is always uh, pretty much like the same. And then what happens is that by the end of the pay period cycle, my balance would be go, would go to 150 pounds or like 50 pounds. And then with the new payday is going to, you know, get like a sum in and that's how I'm going to like, uh, sort of like <laughs> managing moving forward. Yeah, so this is what um, often is, is referred to as like zero balance budgeting. So the concept there, just for our listeners today, if I haven't come across this before, is that you, you pretty much keep the main balance of your current account close to zero so that, you know, everything is allocated out into different pots. And, and you, you know, yeah. going back to that golden rule, giving every pound a purpose. So let's say you've got £2,000 a month coming in. And you know that you're spending, you know, a few hundred pounds on food that goes into a food pot. And then you might have a few hundred pounds on gas, electricity, water that goes into that, that pot. Or you keep that in your main bank account because all your direct debits come out your main bank account. But then for me, where people go wrong is that they um, are fine budgeting with their fixed expenses. And some people have like fixed bill accounts where set money goes in, set money goes out. But it's the variable spends that cause people the biggest challenges. You know, the car tires that burst, the washing machine suddenly breaks down you know, and haven't got enough money set aside. What for, that, of- for that, there is, always, there is like a simple tip is that those things, unless you're like the unluckiest person on earth, they don't happen every week or every month. So even if it happens like once every six months, you've got like five months to save for those events. So whenever like something like that happens, you should have like an emergency fund of like, I would say 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds max, just to put it aside. And, you know, probably, you know, it better than me, but if you're like self-employed, it's always good to keep at least six months of salary parked in the bank account in case anything goes wrong, you can find a client or, you know, you don't have a, you know, you, you want to take like a break. And so I think that it's all about starting today and then planning for the future. And in a way or another, you will make it work, right? Regardless if it's like, you know, 50 pounds saved every month or like even like 30 pounds saved every month. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably the, it's more about the mindset. <laughs> yeah. So second tip there then was about planning ahead. So planning ahead for the unexpected costs, planning ahead for, um, and one good way of actually doing this is, you know, look back at the last 12 months look back through your bank statements and think about what came up for you in the last 12 months that might happen again in the next 12 months. So Christmas, birthday gifts. I mean, obviously the last 12 months may be slightly skewed because COVID has, you know, has changed our spending habits quite considerably. Um, But I think that's a good place to start is rather than thinking about, well, what could happen, what has happened in the last 12 months, and then what could happen again in the next 12 months. And I think the third one is like, just track it. Like you need to know what's happening. If you don't track it, you will never know. And you know, there are like many people out there that might have just like a current account and just use that. But that's not the way to do it. Like you want to have like a current account, a savings account. If you feel adventurous, maybe you want to open like a stock and share ISA just to invest a bit. It can even be 30 pounds a month. It doesn't have to be, you know, tens of thousands. And then like a credit card. And that's how you, you know, that's, you know, already like four or five things around you to basically manage all your needs. Uh, But if you don't track and you only have got a current account, you see this balance going up and down and you don't really understand, you know, what's you're saving for, what's happening, what's not. I think that, you know, the zero budgeting method or also like the envelope method, I think they're called in the same way. um, It works really well. But even in my case, like I don't use it in that sense. Like for me, it's more about, just tracking the cash flow like mm-hmm. if i make two thousand pounds and i spent 1500 
it means I'm saving 500. Uh, you know, as long as the number is positive and it can even be positive by, you know, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, I'm saving. If I go down every month, it means that I'm not really saving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, um, just, just again, for the peps of the, of the listeners today, the um, envelope system, we've actually recorded a previous episode there, so we'll, we'll pop this in the show notes as just to refer back to yeah. Uh, quite a deep dive we did actually with a lady who completely transformed her financial situation just by using the envelope system yeah. essentially all that is is where I talk about using I'm a big lover of Starling Bank and so I plug in Emma into my Starling app and my Starling Bank app enables me to set up different pots which is a, mm-hmm. essentially the digital version of the envelope system. Yeah. The envelope system actually comes from many, like years and years ago, your, your mother's grandmothers may have used this methodology where, you know, a bit like the jam jar system, you just have a certain amount of money and it goes into certain envelopes or jars for certain purposes, for certain jobs. Um, and that's all the um, envelope system is. So I know some people, what when they've shared on the podcast their stories they may take one category of their overspending which typically for a lot of people is food like and especially in the last 12 months I think a lot of us have spent way more on food than we have ever um because we've been at home more and food has also been more expensive so what you could do is if you're overspending on food you could draw out a set amount of cash each month put it into an envelope or put it into a separate savings account so if you're doing it digitally and you know, use that amount of money to try and stick to a fixed budget. Um, and what you can then do is any money that you save, you could then make the decision to top up your emergency fund, to start an emergency fund, to invest in the stock market if you wanted to. Um, and we've done a whole series on investing in the stock market um, on this podcast as well. Um, so that's that. I just want to kind of just talk through what is the envelope budgeting system because some people may not have come across that expression before. But, you know, like, and that's like what, what I meant before is that you don't really even need to go that deep. It's just about because you already know like your what your bills are, your rent is, and you know how much you're spending groceries. So it could just be that you take one fixed number and say, you know, I want to spend a thousand pounds in March and you just stick to it. Yeah. And some people don't, like some people don't know how much they're spending on their bills and their food. Um, Use a tracker. <laughs> yeah, which is absolutely like, and don't be ashamed of that. Like um, it's very, very common for people not to know, which is, you know, goes back to that whole awareness piece that we were talking about right at the beginning. You know, having that awareness to, would actually just help you to take away some of that guilt and shame that actually I don't know how much I'm spending. Yeah. That's okay. And that's totally normal. Definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, it's just all about tracking if you track you know and if you know then you progress if you don't know you won't ever like progress you know Um, I think that the envelope method in itself is very useful but it's also very extreme because you're like really like counting the single like uh, pounds when you can take like a much like softer and lighter way of doing it where one number you stick to it and then you know you keep growing and you know I'd like uh, maybe another story to share like because I like one, one, one of my friends, for example, it was like in overdraft for like two, three years. And um, he's probably not going to watch the podcast so I can share it. Uh, <laughs> but one of the main reasons why, and now he's fully out and he's like saving. And uh, the way he got out was just to wait for like a salary increase. Uh, but it's not the reason why he was in overdraft. It wasn't even because like his salary was that, that low that he couldn't get out. It was just a pure laziness in the sense that he got comfortable in being in overdraft in his account. Mm. And so, you know, he was going out to London, buying drinks, doing all this like super expensive stuff that at some point in your life, you need to realize that you're getting this and your lifestyle should be this. And if you get this, your lifestyle cannot be here. It's that yeah. lifestyle creep, isn't it? And um, what's interesting about that story there is that we all have our own set financial comfort zones. We all have yeah. pattern and habits and behaviours that keep us set in this comfort zone. And even when you're living in an overdraft scenario, this was me in my 20s. I lived entirely in my overdraft for like over 10 years because mm-hmm. it was comfortable and familiar. And more importantly, it, it made me feel safe. And this is where the emotional aspect of money is really important because, you know, if you feel safe in an overdraft because it's familiar to you, then actually doing some deeper dive work around your relationship with money can really open out the emotional aspect of, well, if you feel safe 
in that scenario, in that habit, in that routine, in that behavior, well, then you're not actually really going to come out of that because your brain's telling you that message, I want you to feel safe. Yes. So we do have to think about how else can we create that same emotion by using budgeting in a way that supports you and your relationship with money. And, you know, overdraft are probably one of the most evil things that the banking system has like created, because like we would say it's useful on one side, but mm -hmm. if there weren't any overdrafts, people wouldn't be in overdraft because they would be faced with the reality that, you know, the account is zero, so you cannot spend. Uh, there is no way of like going under uh, while now banks provide overdrafts so they suck money out of you on overdraft fees and for them it's like actually an incentive to keep you in overdraft they don't have any sort of like upside down to have you to you know save them money and put it on a savings account uh, they want to keep you in overdraft and uh, i think that you know sometimes and i'm very extreme when it comes to this uh, if you really want to get out you can even like suffer a couple of years like when i was building emma for three years i didn't take a holiday because i was just fully focused on that i wasn't going out much yeah i've probably lost the best years of my life because i was putting myself all into something but you know if you spend one year not buying like overpriced drinks or doing overpriced stuff and you want to just put yourself in a better situation so you can do it like it's nothing is impossible yeah i, I thank you for the honesty with that as well eduardo i think sometimes you know, sometimes it does take extreme measures if you're in an extreme situation. But other times I'm I, I also think that it's the small steps, isn't it? It's the small yeah, steps yeah. of change or, or the small steps of imperfection that can actually create a better financial situation for us. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and, and so we've talked then about sort of awareness, the, the benefits of having that awareness, the benefits of tracking, and the benefits of of um of, of having a proactive. Uh, plans in place and looking forward rather than just looking back as well. Are there any final tips that you would share around budgeting to help our listeners today? I think I, I have to repeat myself <laughs> because at the end of the day, I don't see anything different from, you know, track it, set a goal, regardless if it's like a high level goal or a very specific goal, like, you know, 50 pounds in groceries per week and then just like stick to the plan and keep tracking it. But probably the best advice I have is like, don't fear. Like there is nothing to fear about money. Uh, money is part of like our like society and the way that we live. So just, you know, like use it in your favor and, uh, you know, be comfortable about checking your bank account every day. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And it's spot on. Like, I really believe that it's not money that we fear. Yeah. It, it's the meaning that we give to money. Yeah, can. and also, you know, there are, in some cases, there are, like, ways that people can help you, so ask for help, right? So, for example, uh, probably I, I'm not, like, a financial advisor, so I cannot provide financial advice, but if you cannot repay two credit cards at the same time, so there are probably ways to get on a, you know, much lower interest rate, um, so there are ways to recover from that, uh, there are ways to actually get out of your own overdraft, so uh, ask for help. Uh, there are plenty of financial advisors out there and, you know, people are willing to help. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Surround yourself by people that can support you, which is a great, you know, a big thing about our community that we've created is about providing support for people. And I, I know that you guys are doing the same with the creation through Emma. Um, yeah. And what, what's next for the Emma app? I'm really curious because I know you guys are adding some great features. Every time I look on my app, like this yeah. be something else that happens. It's great. What, what's I think that what we did in 2020 for Emma is that we actually started introducing comparison and switching. So we're really replicating like the modern version of like a comparison website in Emma. And so we want people to give them access to the best financial products out there to make, you know, wise choices, like, you know, what credit card I need to get, what investment account I need to get, or even like what loan I might get. And, you know, that's the example I was like talking about before. There are people in Emma that, they have like a super high interest rates on their credit cards. And what they do is that they consolidate their debts with like a low, a low and with a much lower interest rate. But what we really want to focus in on uh, in 2021 is to actually, you know, add credit score in the app. So you can actually track your credit score and credit reports because that's it part of your entire financial life. And it gives you access to financial products that, you know, will make your financial life much, much better. And also we are going to add... Um, 
payments. So you would be able to pay your friends and you know transfer money between your accounts, uh, which is really cool because you know you don't have tools out there that make you see all your accounts. Uh, in multiple banks and then transfer the money between them. And the second step that we're actually building right now is that we actually want to bring business accounts for self-employed in Emma. So we will provide features and functionality for self-employed people to be able to manage their personal accounts next to their like uh, business accounts. That sounds exciting. Um, amazing. Some great stuff going on there. And thank you so much for, I know you came into our community last month and did a, a whole masterclass yeah. That was cool. that, which was amazing thank you so much and thank you for sharing your wisdom today your you know your story um and you know your your tips today around how we can actually take make budgeting less scary um, no problem. So thank you so much for your time eduardo um enjoy the rest of your afternoon and your kitten which i know you've just had a little kitten arrive yeah. in your flat recently oh. so <laughs> enjoy um enjoy the rest of lockdown i know we're not too far coming out the other end as we're recording this so we'll really thanks. see on the horizon <laughs> well thanks for having me you're welcome thanks so much take care guys speak soon Thanks so much for listening, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do me a big favor and leave me a comment below this video and let me know what was your one biggest takeaway? What are you going to do differently as a result of watching today's video? Now, you can go ahead and check out more free resources available to you um, at the website, which is the money panel .co.uk or please feel free to tune into our weekly podcast on all of the typical podcast channels that's in her financial shoes and remember small steps big wins let's go mm -hmm.